So let me get this straight. If you're friends with Mel and your friends with her friends and she falls out with those friends, she's going to have a problem with you because you're still friends with her friends. Sounds like high school to me. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another episode with your host, Tabitha. Here is where we have some straightforward discussions on political and social news, television show recaps, and of course, everyone's favorite, celebrity gossip. These discussions are to simply chat about what's happening in the world around us. The intent is not to be mean or malicious, but to remain informed on the more serious topics and to just have a little fun discussing the craziness that surround our favorite celebrities. So grab yourself a drink and a snack. Sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation. Hey, my beautiful souls. Welcome back to another episode. I am your host, your girl, Tabitha. And we're here to talk about last night's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. It is season four, episode five. Information will be down, correct down in the description box. Before we get into it, let me welcome all of my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you've come across this video and are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you. We talk about celebrity gossip. Uh, We talk about reality TV shows, television shows, documentaries. Right now we're talking about um, one of my favorite reality TV shows, Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episodes drop on this for the show on Saturday nights. So my recaps and reviews will be up on Sunday morning. It is Sunday morning. Let's talk about it. Oh, and happy Easter. So the one thing that I took away from this this episode is that if you're friends with Mel and friends become friends with her friends and she falls out with those friends. Then in order to maintain a friendship with Mel, you too have to fall out with those friends. It's crazy to me. The episode starts off with we're back with uh, Lakeisha and Letitia and Kiki. They're at Black talking about their situation. You know, Kiki has some things to say. Kiki and, and some of the other ladies had some things to say about Letitia at Mel's Christmas pajama party. And of course, Letitia found out because Kimmy told her what was going down. And so, of course, Letitia confronts Kiki about it. They have this powwow over at Black. Letitia gets pissed off, walks out, and calls Kimmy. And so, this is where the scene is picking up. She's on the phone with Kimmy talking about Kiki and the situation. Out walks Kiki and says, so who are you talking to about me now? And um, Letitia tells Kimmy that Kiki is here and um, she'll call her back. Not really hanging up the phone with Letitia, not with Kimmy. So Letitia says she's not talking about her. She's talking about the situation. The situation is about her. So, yes, you're talking about Kiki and the situation with Kimmy. And she says she's not talking about her. And then she turns around and says, "Okay, so I'm talking about you because I'm venting to Kimmy. Which is it, Letitia? See, this is what Letitia is the type of person who can't communicate effectively when she is in a high emotional state. Letitia should practice remaining calm in these types of situations so that she can properly convey the message that she is trying to send. 
because you can't do that when you're in a high emotional state. I don't know anybody who could do it in a high emotional state. Those are some high intelligent functioning people who can do it and I applaud them. I am one that cannot communicate effectively in a high emotional state. So I have made it a practice to even in those tense situations to take deep breaths and try to remain calm so that I can communicate effectively. If not, I'm going to be talking out of both sides of my mouth, just like Letitia. Kiki says, um, you know, she basically says, you don't want me to talk about you to other people, but you always get when we're having conversations, you always get up and you walk out and you end up talking about me to other people. Um, but she says, because Letitia always gets up, runs away, walks out, nothing ever gets resolved. And so this is why this situation is ongoing between her and Kiki. Letitia says, I'm not going to keep repeating myself. Now, I understand that on Letitia's part. She doesn't want to keep repeating herself. She said what she said. Um, she, Letitia adamantly says she apologized and then throws in the condescending um, devaluing of that apology by saying for the hundredth time. All Letitia had to say was, but I have apologized to you on more than one occasion. I don't know what else to give or what else that you want from me. But you see, when you're in a high emotional state where you can't communicate effectively, sometimes you say things that makes things worse. And so Kiki says, I need for you to understand that when you told my business, it affected me emotionally. Well, the truth be told, Kiki, you talking about your cousin in a group of other women and one of those women who now views your cousin as an enemy, that could be emotionally hurtful to your cousin. So maybe you can take what you felt and apply it to how she's feeling now. You know, this is family. I wouldn't say go that deep for someone that isn't family. But this is family. And it looks like y'all had or, you know, get, I get the feeling that y'all had somewhat of a close relationship at one point until Letitia told your business allegedly y'all the streets are saying that it was something about bed bugs kiki having bed bugs i don't know if that's true hopefully we get down to what this whole conversation was that mel had with uh leticia in regards to kiki hopefully we we get to find out what that conversation was about anywho like I said, Letitia says she has apologized and then threw in that for the hundredth time. And, and Letitia says, all I ask is that you not talking about, you not talk about my personal business with other people when I'm not there to protect myself. And I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And maybe Kiki, you can ask the same of Letitia. Kiki said, okay. And, um, you know, Tisha goes on, I don't know what more you want from me. I have given you everything that I would expect from someone who did me wrong. Um, she says, I thought we moved past it. <sighs> A lot of back and forth. A lot of back and forth. But I think they they really got down to the basics. All I ask is that you don't speak about me. When I'm not there to protect myself. And I think that's a fair request. But at this point, Kiki points out that 
she didn't even hang up the phone with Kimmy. So Kimmy could have heard this entire conversation between <laughs> Kiki and Letitia. And so Letitia was like, oh, oh, my God. And then she noticed she looked at her phone. Kimmy had hung up. But Kiki goes on to say, I think we need to find a way to move forward. I mean, what else do you want, Kiki, at this point? She told you what all that she expects from you. And I think that's a fair request. And I think you should request the same from her. Tisha was like, no, nah, girl, I'm done with this. You figure out a way because I've done that all that I can I can do. You find you figure out a way. This is all on you. And Tisha walked off and walked back into black. We're over with Marceau and Martel. Martel has a business proposition for Marceau. That business proposition is to buy back into SCOT. S-C-H-O-T. Now, to say the name properly, I have to because there's a reason behind the name. But of course, Marceau asked Martel how the book signing went. And Martel, Martel says that, um, you know, of course, he was embarrassed because Mel kept the kids away because it was her weekend. And Marceau, you know, basically said what I've been thinking. Oh, that's tough, you know, but the kids are authors of this book and they were looking forward to this. And um but recognizes that it's tough, you know, this divorce situation and, and finding a groove and finding a balance and, and um, you know, demanding respect and all of that stuff. Um, but Mar Marceau said the one thing that I have been trying to communicate that, you know, the kids are being used as pawns and as the parents are going back and forth, it's the pawns that are going to be crushed. And that's the bottom line, period. Um, Martel invites Marceau to his wine tasting that is going to take place. And Atlanta is going to be a, a weekend. Marceau's like, who are you going to invite? Family, that type of thing. He was like, no. He's looking at it as more as a boy's weekend. So you're only expecting men to buy your wine Martel, or are you using the wine as a getaway for the men? Because if you're really having a wine tasting to expand this brand and to introduce your wine, you want to introduce your wine to the masses. So you want to invite family, friends, their friends. What are you talking about a boys weekend? And so, of course, Marceau is like, are we talking about like the boys weekend in Atlanta? And they start talking about the club scene and, you know, marriage and, um, you know, Martel saying he's single, insinuating that Marceau is still a child. This has gone from a professional party event to a boys get together. This is going to be interesting. So they move on and um, Martel makes the proposition about buying back into SCHOLT, S-C-H-O-L-T. And um, he asks Marceau's thoughts about that. Now, Marceau in the confessionals point blank period says there would be no SCHOLT without Martel Holt. So he's, he wants to give Martel that grace, but at the same time, he may be the CEO of this company, but his business partner is Letitia, his wife, right? And so he tells Martel, you know, he wouldn't be opposed to it, but he needs to talk to Letitia about it. Um, and he makes the proposition that um, the easiest way to possibly, you know, get this done or maybe, you know, see how this would work out is to do a test run. And so, you know, Destiny is trying to get back on her feet. She's trying to get Madani finally up and running. She owns this building and this building has space for um, 
additional hair salon suites. So she wants to get that part of the building built out so she can rent out those spaces, which be would be an additional income for her, right? And so Marceau, remember Marceau was the one that she went to to work on this project. So um, he's inviting Martel to also work with him on this project so that they can f get a feel for how well they work together and that type of thing. You know, a test run. Not um, right off the jump, Martel buys back in and they don't know how it's going to work and it ends up falling apart again. So I think it's a um, excellent idea. And Martel tells us SCOLT, S-C stands for Scott, and the H-O-L-T stands for Martel Holt. So that's when he's saying that there will be no sculpt without Martel Holt. And I appreciate that um, Marceau uh, is basically recognizing what Martel brought to at least what he did. Because, yeah, up until this point, we view male as the business and the brains behind the majority of what it is that they did together. It's nice to see that Martel did have something going on outside of Mel. We're over with Kimmy and Maurice and Kimmy tells Maurice about, you know, the call that she had with Tisha, um, Tisha and Kiki, you know, going back and forth over what was said at the party. And Maurice basically says, well, you know, what's going to happen. Wanda's going to get involved. Daughter is going to talk to, to mother and mother's going to talk to Kiki and then you're going to get, it's going to be a big problem and you're going to get pulled in some kind of way. Kimmy is like, well, no, that's really not my business. Maurice was like, oh, it's going to be. You're going to get tied into this some kind of way. And he's right. You know, once they pull Wanda into it, Wanda is coming for everybody in defense of Letitia. We're over with De Destiny. She's meeting up with Maurice. You know, Maurice um, has, you know, that experience in that business for credit repair and building up your credit and making your, your business work for you, all of that type of stuff. So she's um, going to see Maurice because, you know, since her divorce, her credit has plummeted um, and she's trying to get back on track with her credit, you know, trying to diversify, do what she needs to do um, in reference to her house. She's got to get herself back on track and she wants to use her house to be able to refinance it, you know, for whatever reasons. I don't know if it's to get money out so she can do what she needs to do, but she also wants to have her house solely in her name. So, you know, Maurice, she's telling Maurice, you know, some of the things that she's had to endure, uh, being on public assistance, going through her savings, all the while, you know, trying to maintain her business, maintain her sanity, be a good mother, that type of thing. And so Maurice is like, well, what's happening with Madani? And she says, Madani opens and then Madani closes. It's hard to keep up with payroll and this and that. And so he asks, um, you know, about the village, the village being male her friend, right? Um, they get to talking about the friendship between Destiny and Mel. And, um, you know, Marie says, would you still be friends with Tisha regardless if her and Mel are enemies, you know? And Letitia was like, uh, Destiny was like, yes. You know, when I think about it, Letitia, you know, through everything that I have been through, I was going through something serious the other day and I couldn't reach out to my so-called friend Mel. Right. And so uh, he said, well, who did you reach out to? And she says, I reached out to Letitia and she was there for me and she helped her through that situation. Letitia's over with Marceau. Marceau is talking to Letitia about 
his conversation with Martel buying back into Scott. Um, but they first talk about Letitia wants Marceau to allow Wanda to shadow him and shadow the kitchen manager at Black because she doesn't know anything about running a business. She doesn't know anything about how to properly run a kitchen and what Wanda is trying to do, there's a whole lot more to it. And so she wants Wanda to shadow Martel for business insight and the kitchen manager on, you know, how to run a kitchen, get some insight on how to properly run a kitchen. And, you know, I don't, I don't see, I see the problem with it, but I understand why Letitia is want, wanting to do it. She wants to make sure Wanda is well educated on this new business venture um, so that she can be prosperous, so she can, you know, be a success at it. To not do otherwise would be setting Wanda up to fail, right? And so Marceau is like, mm, I don't know about that. Y'all know Marceau and, and Miss Wanda don't really get along. Um, he's like, that's a tall order. But of course, you know, he's going to do what his wife asked him to do. He gives in. And so this is when he brings up, I believe he gave in so that he can approach Letitia with this idea of Martel buying back into Scope. And Tisha was like, you know, she doesn't know if she could trust Martel, she's not on board with Martel buying back into Scope right away. Martel, you know, mentions, and Martel was, you know, she was basically saying because of, you know, the things he did and the things he said, jeopardizing the, their marriage and stuff like that. And Marceau was like, what are you talking about? Oh, the, the 20 different women or something like that. Because remember, Martel made the accusation. Martel was in the hot seat because people was coming at him because of his cheating and this and that, da 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 da. And so to try to get some of the heat off of him, he threw Marceau under the bus, like Marceau threw Boris under the bus, right? And so... When he threw Marceau under the bus, he basically said he was cheating with 20 different women. But he apologized, but the damage had been done at that point. So, yeah, you apologize, but, you know, there's still damage. There's still fallout that Marceau and Letitia are dealing with, right? So, um, and that's still affecting Letitia. So, Letitia's upset. It's still affecting her that Martel made this false accusation about Marceau having... 20 different women, but she's not affected by Marceau throwing Maurice under the bus with that picture and insinuating that he was there and was also cheating in Atlanta. But she'll tell us, no, she's cool. Miss me with the bullshit, Letitia. You're affected. You're affected. Anywho, um, like I said, Marceau had apologized, but it's still affecting Letitia and she's just not on board with it because for him to do that, he showed her who he really is. And is he capable of doing something that like that in the future? She thinks so. So she is, you know, she ain't feeling it. Marceau lets her know what he suggested, working on Destiny's salon suites and, you know, trying this test run to see how well they work together and this and that. And so Letitia seems okay with the test run, but she made it clear she's not on board with Martel buying back into Scope right now. We're over with Destiny. She's meeting up with Mel. Let me take a sip. So they start the conversation off. Mel arrives. Melody was waiting for her. And Mel is like, let's just get into it. Let's just jump on it. You want to talk to me? Whatever, right? And so Destiny starts talking about she she was working with this friend on a project, a friend of Mel's on a project. And abruptly, that friend called a meeting and put the project on hold because 
She's overheard about the breakdown of the friendship between Mel and Destiny and whatever drama they got going on. They, she doesn't want that drama to overshadow the project that they're working on together, right? And Mel is sitting there with this smirk on her face. And in that moment, I was like, you see what I'm saying? Mel puts on for the camera this this smiley face, this rah-rah pageantry attitude, um, puts herself out as she's this friend and loyal and loving and caring and empowering and all of this stuff in front of the camera. But she does some dirty shit behind the cameras. I see you, Mel. I see you. The manipulation tactics that you do to keep fans on your side and keep them viewing you as the perpetual victim. So when you do dirty shit, they will always blame the other person. I'm not that viewer. I see you. I see you, girl. Um, She's the type, Mel is the type of person, and, and some of y'all have said it in the comments, that Mel will throw the rock and hide her hands. And this situation that is going on with Destiny, who's working on a project with a friend of Mel's, and that friend abrupt, abruptly stops the project because of whatever's going on between Destiny and Mel. If it's business, it's business. I can understand the meeting. I hear you and Mel got some issues going on. I just I just want to know if we will be able to move forward with this project because I don't want y'all's drama overshadowing the project. That's a conversation to have, and I completely understand that. And, of course, Destiny will be like, well, you won't have any problems for me. Um, this is business. I'm here to work on this project and make sure it's a success, right? Mel course she comes back and says oh I'm not telling people not to do business with you all the while there's this spark on her face I'm not telling people not to do business with you because of whatever we're going through but Mel knows that her there's there's a level of loyalty amongst friends right and so if Mel is having a problem and that friend who's working on the project with Destiny is friends with Mel first, then, of course, she's going to throw Destiny by the wayside. And Mel knows that she doesn't have to say, listen, I don't want I don't want you working on on the project with with Destiny. She doesn't have to say that. She doesn't have to say that. She doesn't have to say that. Furthermore, we've seen how Mel works. We've seen in, in, I think, season one or season two, when her and the Scots were for falling out, Marceau and, and Letitia, how Mel was trying to hold work from Marceau and Letitia. We saw that when... when So Mel knows that this friend of hers who's working on this project with um, Destiny is going to slowly back off from Destiny because she's got a problem with Destiny. I see you. I see you, Mel. I see you. Um, Mel goes on to talk about how, you know, it's being put out there that she abandoned Destiny in a time of need um, and brings up what was said at the reunion show when um, Carlos King asked Destiny, where was their relationship um, now? And Destiny says she really doesn't know because she hasn't talked to Mel since they wrapped the previous season. And so Mel says, you know, it's totally untrue. And so she pulls out her cell phone 
and starts reading off all of these text messages. And I'm like, text messages? Text messages is a quick check-in. Hey, girl, how you doing? I'm just checking on you. I want to know how you doing. And you respond, hey, girl, I'm doing good. How you doing? And they'll respond and say, I'm doing good. Okay, I'll chat with you later. That type of thing. A text message amongst friends is a quick check-in. That's not talking to your friend, right? Talking to your friend is picking up the phone and saying, hey, girl, I, I, I just wanted to check on you. How you doing? I heard so-and-so allowing that friend to, to talk to you and share what's going on in their life. And you do the same. You can do it on the phone. You meet for coffee. You meet for drinks. You know, you do what girlfriends do. That's what Destiny is talking about when Destiny says, I haven't talked to Mel. But Mel views these text messages as the two of them talking. And so there was points in those text messages where Destiny, where Mel actually checked in, checked in with Destiny and Destiny didn't respond. And so that's what Mel is throwing up in. In Destiny's face. Child. Destiny tried to tell her. Talk. But Mel over talks her. Because Mel's right you know. Mm -hmm. um, and as she goes through all of these text messages. Destiny makes this face. And Mel's like. Don't be rude. Destiny is like. I'm sorry what? Mel says don't be rude. And I'm like. She's probably making that face. Because it's idiotic in her mind. But OK, uh, so now we get to the root of it. Right. It ain't about text messages. These text messages that she's bringing up, it's not even about destiny saying she hasn't talked to Mel at the reunion. The sole issue that Mel has is that destiny is friends with Letitia now that Mel is no longer friends with Letitia. And that tells me that behind the scenes, when Destiny says that the person she was trying to work on a project with abrupt, abruptly quit, they know that they can't deal with Destiny if Mel has fallen out with Destiny. And Mel doesn't have to say, don't work with Destiny. She has set that precedence. Mel is full of shit. I see you, girl. So, of course, the, the, the conversation about destiny and Tisha comes up and, and Mel sincerely has a problem with the fact that destiny is friends with Letitia. That's the bottom line. Then Mel brings up that destiny is still friends with Martel. She's still friends with Martel. And she says Martel is one that is dogging her out all over social media. Yet you talk to Martel every single day. So. Mel just told you what it is to be friends with her. When she falls out with someone, you can no longer have any type of relationship with that person. If you have a relationship with that person, then she's going to be looking at you sideways because you're still friends with that person. And she's going to back off from you. Destiny lets us know. Well, truth be told, she shouldn't be, if by, by Mel's logic, then she shouldn't have been friends with Mel after they broke up because she was friends with Martel first. Child, it's a bunch of arguing going back and forth. The bottom line, the friendship between these two is over. It's over. And, and it's a sad way to be because this, this, this idea of friendship from male, a grown woman is very high schoolish. Very high schoolish. My friend can't be friends with someone that I'm no longer a friend with. 
listen, I can be friends with someone. The only thing I require, I could be friends with someone who is friends with someone that I'm not friends with. The only thing I require, the only thing I ask is don't talk about me with said friend. Keep that friendship separate and, and keep our friendship separate. And, you know, I'm never to the point where I'm viewing anybody that I have fallen out with as a bold enemy or someone's out to get me. I, I, if that was that type of person, I wouldn't have been friends with them to begin with. Right? So if my friend is still friends with someone that I'm no longer friends with, I will probably ask my friend, how is so-and-so doing? I hope she's doing okay. I hope he's doing okay. That's the type of person and the maturity level that I'm on. Y'all get down in the comments. That was the end of the episode. Y'all let me know your thoughts. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? I know I got a whole bunch of male lovers who follow me over here because they want to hear what I got to say about male so that they can get down in the comments and talk shit to me about my opinion about male. Hey, have at it. I love the engagement as long as we're respectful, right? Y'all let me know your thoughts, but I see Mel and I see the manipulation tactics and I see her level of high school maturity when it comes down to being friends with someone. And no, Mel, you don't have to specifically say, girl, I, don't work with her. Me and her done fell out. You don't have to say that. All you have to say is that, yeah, me and Destiny, we ain't cool like that no more. We ain't cool like that no more. And then when you go on talking your shit about what it is that Destiny did, that friend now knows you feel a certain kind of way. And you know that. And that friend, if they want to remain friends with you, will unfriend this friend. And you know that shit. You know it. Y'all get down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the conversation. Make sure you subscribe and rate the episode. And to stay connected with Tabitha, head on over and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's Tabitha. And you can also follow on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All the links will be available in the more info box. Until next time, be good to yourselves and each other. And each other.